Imagine a world where you could turn any kind of headphone into a full studio and get the same sound for music making, the same abilities, spending a lot less, not destroying the patience of your neighbors. All of that is kind of possible to some extent. And today I would love to share with you how. Hey guys, welcome. I'm sure you're familiar with that one problem. When you're starting out making music, you usually don't have a dedicated space, a dedicated studio where you can make music as loud as you want to, and you, you're stuck and forced to use headphones, which is fine to some extent, but especially when it comes to like mixing, mastering, headphones have a couple of disadvantages. First of all, uh, a quite obvious one, like speakers, you can actually feel the bass. There's a lot more bass, physical bass, air that is being moved with headphones. Those tiny things, they don't move a whole lot and your body doesn't really feel it because sound is also to some extent a sensation you just feel with your entire body. Then another problem of headphones, since they're like stuck on your ears, if you're listening to one side, only that ear on that one side hears that sound. With speakers, even the speaker on this side, you can hear with that ear. That's what is called cross feet. Like the, the speaker on the opposite side still feeds some sound there. It's way easier to locate things. Everything that has to do with stereo, spreading elements, having them in the middle, mono, is at least for me impossible to accurately decide with headphones. And then, then there's like the, the fun part. I mean, let's be honest, like headphones, nice, cool. And I sometimes like listening to music on headphones because it's very intimate or you can go outside, see the world, enjoy the sun and still listen to music. But there is nothing that just like feels better than listening to music, feeling it and really loud, cranking it up. Not always while producing, but it's just way more fun. It's way more creative. Whenever I start making music, making it in, in a studio with big speakers, it's just more fun. It's more enjoyable. If you have more fun while making music, you probably will end up making more music and even better music. With headphones, not really, not really possible. Also collaborating with other people, having a guitar player, a drummer in your studio, and just jamming along just with headphones, that's, that's really boring. The solution, we need headphones. I got here the Sennheiser HD251 MK2. I really love them for, for DJing. Not great for mixing. All the Z or however you pronounce them already. A level up for mixing. Uh, these these I won't even use. Technics um, RPDH1200. They're not working anymore. I still keep them because they were my first DJ headphones. So feeling a little nostalgic. And we got Olo Audio. Those are actually really good for mixing. They claim to be extremely flat. And yeah, those are the ones we'll test. The software, it's, it's a software. It promises to simulate a room on your headphones. And I already tested it a little. It gets pretty, pretty close. But let me first give you like a, a run through the software, explain you how it works, and then we'll get to the conclusion if it's actually worth it. Um, first of all, let's let's start the screen recording. It's fairly simple if you know a little about audio. So first of all, what I actually really like, it's already implemented into it. It is kind of capturing the sound on your computer and putting itself in between the internal computer sound and the output of your sound card device, whatever you're using to plug in your headphones, usually probably on the go will be just uh, the output of, of the MacBook directly. And this way you don't have to have another software taking care of that. That, that saves a lot of resources. You select then the, the headphones you're using. Uh, actually really quick, just check. They're supporting quite a lot of headphones, like probably 90% of the headphones that anyone making music could be interested. Most of the biodynamic stuff, um, 
Then you got KRK, uh, Marshall, Neumann, Prisono, Sennheiser, all of the Sennheiser stuff, Yamaha. So it, it covers quite a lot. I, I would actually love to see if they would also cover stuff you would never ever use for music. For example, like the, the AirPods, the Apple ones. Because I honestly, sometimes if I'm on the go, I just I just use whatever I have. And if it's that, I, I'll use it. So and then, then you can select which speakers you want to simulate. Like right now we have like the big studio speakers, the main monitor is selected. You could also go down to the NS10s, very classic kind of speaker seen in a lot of studios, the old school studios. Then you can change like the speaker width from 60%, which is like the usual triangle you should sit in. If you make it wider, you can also see directly that it changes like the frequency response and you can make it even so wide that it's like totally pointless. You've got a lot of subwoofer boost kind of control to simulate a little more bass tone control. You can like boost the highs, lower them a little and tweak it and change it to your liking. Something I also really like is that you can use it kind of as, as a monitor controller. You could, for example, cut the entire top end to check the, the bass on its own, can do the same for the mid frequencies and of course just listening to the top frequencies to find mistakes and, and get them in check. There is a built-in limiter just to make sure nothing is clipping and then pressure, presence, hard to describe. You have really to test it for yourself. By the way, if you're interested, I'll link down below in the description like where you can get the demo and just test it for yourself. That's the best way to know how it works, how it sounds. Because what I found out while testing it, it hugely depends how much you actually benefit from it on, on the headphones you're using. The shittier and the, the less for mixing intended the headphone actually is, the bigger, of course, the improvement. Since it's impossible to really like give you a, a demo, like I will just record the changes it does. I will record internally. I, I, I can't like play it through headphones and then record it again. That doesn't give us any result in any kind of way that makes sense. But let's just record what it outputs. Let's pick one of my songs so we don't get any copyright problems. Let's maybe take Love or Let Go. That one should be out at the beginning of next year. Okay, this is actually working. While editing, I realized it absolutely didn't work. I'll do it again. I will now unplug the mic here on the camera, plug it in here so you'll hear exactly what the software does. The same thing I will hear on these headphones. The same thing you would hear if you would use that software and go through the different settings. Now the big question is, how good is it? Will it actually replace my studio? Of course not. It's it's not 100% able and how could it be able to replace a studio? Will I use it here in the studio? Definitely not. It's kind of pointless. I spend a lot of time and effort to build this room and it's just physically not possible to emulate it 100%. 
but this right here gets some of these points right and there are a lot of like alternatives that try the same thing i think this one right here gives you the most control and it's the most convenient and i think also the least expensive and i think in the future i will definitely keep this and use it whenever i'm not in the studio it is better than just using your headphones without it. It will correct the, the inaccuracy of the headphone. It will simulate the room, the crossfeed, and make your headphones at least like 30 to 50% more like a studio. The, the bass you feel outside is still, of course, not possible. And also like moving your head doesn't change the sound as it does in a real studio because it's glued to your head. So it's a little different still. But whenever I'm, I'm making music, especially like critical mixing and balancing an entire song and checking reverbs and stuff like that, I will definitely slap it on. It's like a, a little cost to improve all of my mixes I do on the go in the future. I mean, 2020, there is not much on the go mixing, but hopefully in 2021, we'll be allowed again to tour a little and make music on the go on an airplane. And uh, yeah, again, if you want to check it out, try it out. I'll link it down below in the description. There's like a full demo you can test out and decide for yourself if it's actually worth it. Thanks all for watching. Tomorrow, of course, back here in the studio. Today, still working on that one track. I mean, Love or Let Go is finished up for the next release. And I'm working now on Save the Day, my first club, full club release in a very long while. I, I, I didn't feel like releasing club music in 2020. But yeah, we just need to get back to normal as soon as possible. Thanks all for watching. See you tomorrow again. Oh,